Crew Fest takes place this weekend, July 29th in Brantford. And one of the great headliners is Biff Naked. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited about this week. Okay, so I'm very excited. So when I got the email to talk to, about, talk to you, I know you're playing at the festival this weekend, but they also brought up that you're making a documentary, Biff Naked, One of a Kind. And when I heard that, I'm like, ooh, there's someone I'd really like to hear more of her story about. Uh, oh. Why did you decide to uh, to put this into action at, at this point, moment in your career and in your life? Well, it wasn't my decision. <laughs> They've been making, they were going to make a... Um a feature film based on my book, I Biff a Kiss. And uh, in their negotiation with that, they wound up uh, kind of deciding that they also wanted to do a documentary feature um, just based on my adoption story and about my career and uh, some of the misadventures in my life and just my um, my ongoing story, I guess, in my chosen family and uh, just all the all the things uh, that happen in a person's life. So it's been really interesting. They have been following us for three years. Um, we've been filming in Europe. We filmed in uh, Mexico and uh, the crew is here today. Um, we're set up in my apartment in Toronto and they're filming here and they will be filming on Saturday. <laughs> Oh, uh, looking back at your career, like, what is there a, you know, you said you didn't really have a choice, but now that you, you didn't have to make the choice and you're actually doing it, uh, and you wrote the book a few years ago, what's going through your head to go, like, to really look back and, and, and look back at your career and your life and see, like, all the things you've, you've created? You know, I always feel very lucky. Um, I'm lucky to be able to talk to you uh, today and nice people like you who want to ask me questions. Um, I'm lucky to be able to play shows and festivals like we will be this weekend. And um, I don't know, I feel like, you know, for whatever, for whatever reason, my songs um, have resonated with people. And uh, that's something that I never take for granted. And as we continue to work and write and create and make new records, um, I'm always really conscious of uh, just trying to be authentically honest, I guess, when I am doing lyrics and, and performing, because I think that's why uh, people kind of like it. I think people can relate to it. I think that, you know, we're all the same. I think that we're all going through all of the same things um, at once. It's relatable. And uh, I think that that never changes. You know, as I get older, also my fans keep getting older. And um you know, we can all relate to each other. Uh, speaking of getting older as an artist, uh, what changes in terms of your perspective? I feel like, you know, I was a musician and a songwriter before I be fell back on journalism somehow. And <laughs> uh, uh, I felt like throughout my youth, it was all about innocence. And now that I'm older, I feel like it's about experience. Um, would you say that that there's a different approach to to how you write lyrics and how you write music as you as you get older you know i wish i could say yes <laughs> i think sometimes i'm just as ridiculous as i was when i was 21 when it comes to um you know subject matter for example of songs like we wrote a song for the new record called stay in your lane and it's a, a song kind of bemoaning um people who are bullies uh, in a way. And that's exactly how I felt when I was just starting out in the business at, at 21 years old. And I still feel the same way today. Um, a lot of my songs are about heartbreak or um, longing, and that's still the same today. So I think that, you know, even though hopefully I'm older and wiser, hopefully I'm a better vocalist, as I have more experience than when I first started, I think, you know, that a lot of the things that are important to me and uh, that make me emotional are still the same things today. Uh, I feel like, I, as I was saying in in the take that I forgot to press record on, it's it's always my 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 joy to talk to people I've always admired and, and really looked up to, and and I love your music. I've been listening to you since wow, since I was an eighth grade. <laughs> We're not that oh, far in age, so... but thank it, you. I just been oh, such so a cool. fan. Forever. And uh, thank you. Thank I feel you. like there's a lot I'd like to ask you about acting and then video games, but like mm -hmm. even like I, I love that you were in the Ready to Rumble soundtrack. But <laughs> yeah, me too. I loved that. I loved it. It was such a great experience. Uh, but you know, the big thing you're you're really known for is your music. Uh, are I've I've 
I've you've had a few singles over the last few years. Are we going to expect a new album sometime soon? Absolutely. We've been making the champion record um, for about, I would say at this point, like three years. We were going to release it in 2020. And obviously the pandemic hit and then the summer came along and there was just so much um, social unrest. And um, it became very important to me personally, not to put a record out. I felt it was not it was not the right time. I thought it was more important to basically march in the streets with uh, with all of our friends and family members and stand up for justice and, and kind of put our bodies in that mode rather than um, continuing to record and, and release a record. So it was on hold uh, for a year. And then of course the pandemic kept going. And so that kept it on hold. And now at this point, we're into the 25th anniversary of the Ibificus record. So that put it on hold. And I think that um, by the time the documentary comes out, we'll probably simultaneously release a new record to go with it. All right. I can't wait to hear some more new music. Just two more questions. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we're playing in, uh, you're playing in Brantford. Any good memories of uh, Brantford or the 519 area? Oh my gosh. You know, I have played across Canada since I was 18 years old. And, you know, every time we came to Southern Ontario was always very special. Uh, back in the day, it was often for Frosh Week when they still had Frosh Weeks uh, <laughs> at universities. And we played so many shows um, all over, all over the GTA. And, um, you know, it's just, it just makes me happy. Now that I live here, I moved here four years ago from Vancouver, where I lived for 30 years. Um, it just makes me happy always to go to these shows to perform and to see a lot of familiar faces and a lot of the same fans that have always been supporting me. Beautiful. And uh, last question. I know, you know, we're talking about the documentary and you're going into the studio to record, but I'm guessing playing live is still something new and exciting every time you do it. Um, what can we expect from your performance uh, at Crew Fest this weekend? Well, you know, I'm really excited because I'm also just like you guys, I'm a music fan. So I'm a huge fan of the Headstones and Our Lady Peace. And of course, we've toured with both bands extensively over the years. Um, so for me, I'm excited to see everybody and, uh, and to hear them perform. And for me also, my job um, is to you know, rock as hard as I possibly can. Um, you know, I don't take it lightly that I am a female on the bill with all, all guys. Um, so for me, it makes me work twice as hard, uh, which I love it. You know, I love performing. It's my favorite thing to do. It's my favorite aspect of anything I do over recording or anything else. And uh, I think that we're really going to bring uh, a really enormous sound and a relentless rocking show. That's amazing to hear. It's going to be an amazing show, like such a great lineup. Super yeah. Psychos there, Sky Sweetenham, if you're a fan of hers. Uh, Headstones are playing Our Lady Peace Live. And of course, Biff Naked, who is talking to me now. Thank you so much. And I just want to say I'm an avid runner. Rarely do I ever put on my headphones and go for a run and not put on, put on Moment of Weakness. It always pumps me up. And uh, oh, thank that's you so much. Awesome. Oh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the weekend.